I want to talk a little bit about that, things that cause us stress. I guess we could just simply call it dealing with stress. I think every one of us here has stress in your life some, in some way, some fashion. I can't think of a time in history that's probably could be more stressful. We're living in a time when there's two wars going on while we're seated here in the comfort of these four walls. There's two wars raging. Actually, more wars, but we're talking about physical wars, Ukraine and in Gaza. Many of us have TVs. We see the carnage. We see the desolation. It's just heart-wrenching to add to the stress that people have besides what's going on. And you go to the shopping store and you go to pick some certain things up that you're used to, you're accustomed to eating. And then you look at the price and think, I believe I could change my eating habits. It doubled in price a year ago. What caused that? Well, you know what caused it, inflation. Costs more to take your food to the stores. It's what happens when you try to get rid of fossil fuels. I'm not here to talk politics. I'm just here to talk about what's happening. Stress. Stress. All of us experience it. Then add to the wars. How about natural disasters? Earthquakes. Fires. Floods. All kinds of natural disasters. We see pictures of that. Earthquakes, many different places. Personal, our own personal crisis that we have going on in our life. Lots of those things happening in our own personal life. Always, you know, sometimes each family has one member that's a little difficult. <laughs> we all understand what I'm talking about. Psalms 46. In this chapter, we have the Father's character, our Heavenly Father's character is displayed. And we see his willingness to help in times of trouble. He is our refuge and strength, a very ready help in trouble. The Lord of armies is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Stop striving and know that I am God. The King James says, be still. I like that. Be still. Hmm. Wow. I can remember hearing my mother tell me that when I was in church. Be still. Be still. I was for a couple seconds. Be still. You get daddy to take you out and give you a an adjustment. That did happen. Only once. I was embarrassing to come back in the church when they knew what happened on the other side of them doors. <clears throat> I got an adjustment. Today, families, it seems they don't do much adjusting anymore. Didn't hurt me. Actually helped me. I didn't like it at the time. Dad put a hand in my backside and then made me cry. And then he said, now stop your brutes and what? You're the one that did it. Oh, and me and that. <laughs> wow. Keep your mouth shut, Roger. <laughs> so let's define some terms here. Stress. Pressure that we feel against us, pulling us in more than one direction. And then there's another term, distress. It's similar, but it's more serious. It's intense pressure that comes and brings great anxiety of soul and emotional pain. And then the word strive, it means to contend with, 
to fight against or put forth strong effort towards something. It's something that we physically do. We fight against certain things, and sometimes we will realize it, but we're fighting against God's dealing in our life. God is allowing it to happen because he's working on our character. He's molding us and shaping us because he loves us. That's why. Now, the psalmist in this chapter uses natural disasters as an example of a tragedy that we might face. Aren't you glad we live in this area? Has anybody here ever experienced an earthquake? We did. We all did a little bit. Do you remember? I know exactly where it was. Do you know? Huh? Somebody came and told, I was painting a, a fireplace mantle in a second floor fancy house. Um, it was the owner of Bath Fitter. You ever see commercial called Bath Fitter? I don't get too much information. I better stop there. Anyway, it was his house that we were working on. Anyway, I was on a stepladder. I was painting a fireplace mantle. And it shook a little bit. And I didn't think nothing of it. There was a big bulldozer working around the house, Bob. I mean, a big one. It was a big one. And I thought nothing of it. They said there was an earthquake. I said, you're crazy. I said, you got an excavation equipment out here. What are you talking about? There ain't no earthquake till I got home. I found out, wow, everybody had an earthquake. Well, earthquakes aren't fun if it affects you. We just had a quiver. Can you imagine it shaking your house apart? Tearing a road open, as you see pictures of? Well, this chapter talks about these disasters, these natural disasters. And you know, no matter how much of a disaster you see, even though the mountain can roll into the sea, that's nothing like God's power. His power is tremendous. When you compare it to the power of God, Causing mountains to fall to the ocean, tidal waves, tsunamis. You know what a tsunami is usually caused by? An earthquake in the ocean floor causes tsunamis. Tidal waves rock the shorelines. Verse 6, the nations made an uproar. The kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice and the earth quaked. So we can see here from this chapter, the message is clear. Whether we're suffering a major calamity or we're struggling with just common problems, God is sovereign and he will take care of us. So what are some sources of stress? Well, how about the pressures we face in our modern culture? Consequences of wrong decisions. You ever make a wrong decision? You need to raise your hand. I've made my own choices and wrong choices, yes. And if I could go back, I'd fix them. I can't. Wrong choices, consequences because of wrong decisions, striving against God, contending with our circumstances. Or maybe there's other people that have unrealistic expectations of us. I see sometimes that happening with parents. It's set too high a standards for their children. You know what I see sometimes? I see parents living their life to their kids. Parents always wanted to do this or do that. And so because they didn't do it, they try to live their life to their kids and they make their kids do certain things. That's wrong. Stop it. They have their own life. Look at your fingers. They're all different. Don't make them like you. God has made you special. Are you listening to me? They're special. You let God do his business. Don't the parents live through the kids? You had your chance. Knock it off. <laughs> it's their life. It's not yours. I don't know why I said that. Maybe somebody should have heard that. Vocational stress. Maybe your particular job's giving you stress. Maybe you've had to change vocations. Maybe, maybe you found yourself here at 40, 50 years old, and now you're having to change vocation. Wow, wouldn't that be rough? Maybe you've had some of that vocational stress. Criticism from others. 
So how can we overcome this distress? No matter what these external pressures are, you see the real battle is taking place inside. Our mind tells us what we should do. Our emotions pull us in a different way. And it certainly is tempting to simply walk away from this stressful circumstance. And sometimes God leads us out of these situations, especially in abusive or dangerous ones. Keep the mind of the Lord because he does not expect you to stay in these types of situations. He don't expect you to try to make it work in an abusive or dangerous situation. There's other circumstances that we won't always fully escape by just walking away. But the striving and contending is an internal civil war that takes with us wherever we go. Psalms 46.10 says, stop striving, or King James says, be still. I like that better. Be still. Know that I'm God. Stop attempting to fight life's battles on your own. Stop it. You try. You won't succeed. Let God do it. Choose to rest by trusting the Lord who daily bears our burdens. Psalm 68, 19. Jesus spoke of giving us this kind of supernatural peace in John 14, 27. We are called to persevere and rely on him to strengthen us no matter what the cause. And God can enable you to walk through stress and he can do so victoriously and peacefully. Well, that's what's the beautiful part about being a Christian is the peace. Doesn't matter. God's in control. Doesn't matter what the outcome is because God's in control. Do you know God today? Oh, I know that most of you say that you know him, and yes, in a sense, you do. You've accepted Jesus as your Savior. You have received his forgiveness for your sins, and you will go to heaven when you die. That part of it, I know that you know. But for truly to experience the peace in the midst of distress takes a relationship with God that goes much deeper. You must know him not just as your savior, which I just spoke about, but as Lord. There is a difference. Is he Lord of your life? You need to make him Lord of your life. Give him your all, not just part of you. Give him your all. You don't need to be afraid because God knows exactly more about you than you know about yourself. So you don't need to be afraid to let go and let God have his way in your life. Let go and let him have his way in your life. You've got a burden today. Let go of it. Give it to the Lord. Give it to him. Haven't you carried it long enough? Give it to him. It's time for you to, to experience liberty and freedom and peace in your life. Let go of it. Give it to God today, will you? Give it to him. You got past hurts of things that happened years ago? Let go of it. Let go of it. Give it to the Lord today. Let today be a new day in your life from this day forward. Let go of it. Give it to him. And you experience the peace that passes all understanding. Psalms 46 gives us a very powerful picture of the Lord. He's our refuge, a place that we can run to. He is our strength when we are weak. He is a very ready help in trouble. Verse 1, he's the God of Jacob who is our stronghold. He's also called the Lord of armies, verse 7 and 11. He wants to walk with each of us in a personal way. He is ready to fight your battles. In these verses, the word that's translated God is Elohim, which means infinite in power. It's used in Genesis 1-1 for the creator. 
In other words, we can depend on the one who not only made us, but made the entire universe. Isn't that amazing? And he lives right here. He made the entire universe, and yet he lives right here. So how can we know him in a personal way? Spend time with him. How are you going to get to know anybody? You got to spend time with them. If you want to get to know them, get to know what they like to do, their hobbies, you got to spend time with these. You want to get to know God? Spend time with him. Find out what he thinks by reading, by reading the Bible. Observe God's ways, and then you'll understand your ways more better when you understand God's ways. Reflect on how he has worked in the lives of other people in the scriptures. You can find people in the scripture just like you. Yeah, you can. They're in there. Read them, find them. They're just like you. You'll, under, you'll see how, how, how much they're just like you. Maybe you're some like Peter. Huh? Oh, he was just, just, he's spare the moment. Peter is spare the moment. When we look how Jesus walked, we see the inner peace that he had, even through the difficulties of his life. We need to be transparent with our Heavenly Father on how you think and how you feel. Be transparent. Be honest with God. He already knows. Lord, you know, I just don't, I just don't feel good today. I don't feel good. I just don't, I just, I don't know what's wrong. I just don't feel good. There's lots of things. I, I, I could just go on and on about things that God's done for me. Things that happen through, through the week to me that I can't have happen here. It just can't happen here. And the Lord knows that. And guess what? He has sustained me. He has honored me. He's been good to me. Abby sang about. He's been good to me. He's been good. Praise his wonderful name. He's been good to me. Take time to listen to his voice. That's speaking to your spirit. Take time. Be still. Listen to his voice. Watch how the Lord maneuvers victory for you in the midst of your trials. Understand his ways. He corrects you in love and he redirects his will in your life. Let him do it. Give him permission to do that. Be sure your ideas of the Lord aligns with what the scripture describes about him. There is no friend like Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Isn't that true? No one can quiet our spirits or lift us out of the distress like he can. And when you know him, you can thrive in any situation. There is no exception. No one should tolerate any kind of abusive behavior I mentioned before or any other situation that the Lord would tell you to leave. That's why it's important that you're sensitive to him. Be sensitive to him. Listen to his voice. He loves you. He's trying to tell you what to do. What to do next? You ever ask that question? Where do we go from here, Lord? What do you have in plan for our life now? How many of you ever went sat by a lake? You ever been by a lake? When it's not windy or blowing and the, and, and the water's real calm, isn't it amazing the reflection you see in the water? Isn't it beautiful? It's, all, it's that beautiful that sometimes it's hard to see the difference, isn't it? I said that to say this. It is important that you learn to quiet yourself. Be still. Be still. If there's some place you can go during the course of the day, no radio, TV, or, or cell phone, let the cell phone set, go someplace and be still. 
and be quiet before the Lord because he wants to speak to you. He wants to talk to you. Yes, you, you and you. He wants to talk to all of you. You're not too young. You're not too old. He loves every one of you and he wants to talk to all of you. Every one of you. Thinking about stress this time of year, I just thought of something. You young people, I know that sometimes there's lots of things that you want to do or maybe you're thinking about getting something for somebody. You don't have the money to do it. Guess what? There's more things in life than just money. Hey, recognize that? Here it says, happy Pastor Day from Sophia. There are millions of promises God made, but I know one to love you, every one. Rainbow, God's promise to never flood the earth again. I carry that in my Bible. That's worth more to me. You couldn't buy that from me for 500 bucks a day. Listen, folks, there's more to life than just money. Listen, don't let Christmas be stressful. It doesn't have to be. If you have paper and crayons or a pencil or a pen, you can make somebody's day a wonderful Christmas day. It doesn't take money. You listen to me, young people. Just show mom and dad how much you appreciate them. It's all it takes. You don't need any money. And I'll guarantee you you'll get to their hearts so fast <laughs> that a butterscotch lozenger won't even get to your stomach that quick. Huh? Uh, remember, he's the reason for the season. It doesn't take a lot of money to make somebody happy. We have two choices. I'm closing with this. Either continue to strive internally or you can choose to rest in the Lord and to trust him. It doesn't mean that we're doing nothing. What it means is that we're trusting God to guide us and to ultimately to resolve the situation. And everybody has situations in your life and families. Give it to God today. Would you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, I've shared today what I believe that you've placed in my heart and how to deal with stress. And I pray, Lord, that I'd be the first one to put it to work. I give it all to you. Give it to you, Lord, for you to work, for you to touch the situations. It's yours. And Lord, I thank you for the peace that I have today because I've given it to you. There's theirs here today that I don't know what they're struggling with, but this message was for them. I pray with them as well. Lord, work in their life. And I pray you will give them the rest and the peace that they need to have in their life. The happiness that perhaps that has escaped them. There was perhaps a time in their life they was very happy and that happiness is eroded. Somehow this problem has eroded this happiness. And I pray, Lord, that you'll restore that happiness. Restore the joy of their salvation. Restore that in their life. Give them the peace that passes all understanding. It's time to go home, Lord. Give us each traveling mercies to our homes till we come back and praise and worship you again. Give us a good week and give us someone to share with that they need to know you as their Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord bless you.